Knowledge and learning underpin the progress we make as individuals and as a society. When we know more, we can solve new problems and explore fresh possibilities. For hundreds of years, Oxford University Press has been committed to sharing the best in human thinking. From a child reading their very first words to a researcher expanding the frontiers of their field, we passionately believe in the transformative power of knowledge and learning to inspire progress and realize human potential. But the world is changing. When all information is at our fingertips, data needs understanding. As content crowds every screen, ideas need space to breathe. And when the next great thinker can come from anywhere, they need to be seen. So Oxford University Press is changing too. Whether we're making learning work for anyone, anywhere, anytime, connecting a global community of English language learners, or helping influential ideas achieve greatest impact, we will meet the needs of education and research in new ways, with new ideas for new audiences. For as long as the world keeps making progress, we will always be advancing knowledge and learning. Oxford University Press. Advancing knowledge and learning. Hello and welcome. I'm Liesl, a proud member of the TV team at Oxford University Press. I want to firstly thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Before we get into today's presentation, I would like to share with you a little bit more about Oxford University Press South Africa. Oxford, as we are more commonly known as, publishes for all educational sectors, including schools, higher education, and of course, TVET. We are an award-winning educational publisher with over 100 years of publishing experience in South Africa. Oxford University Press is South Africa's number one dictionary and literature publisher. We publish more than 2,700 books in 11 official home languages. Our books are well-researched and we pride ourselves in the delivery of high service standards. There's a renewed focus from the government towards civil institutions and the upskilling of people and preparing them to enter the 21st century workplace confidently. One of the most anticipated changes within the TVET arena is the revised syllabi in key subject areas. Oxford welcomes these changes as it speaks to our core mission statement to transform lives through education. We recognize the power of education to change and advance knowledge and learning by uplifting and empowering individuals. We strive in our commitment to develop and deliver high quality and affordable educational materials to learners, students, teachers, and lecturers. You, as lecturers, while well, you play a critical part in the delivery and the development of our youth. You stand at the front line of the educational system, and we understand that these changes and shifts as you respond to the demands of the fourth industrial revolution can cause uncertainty. But by choosing to attend this presentation, you've taken the first step in responding to these changes, and it's our privilege to partner with you along this journey. Our main aim with this presentation is to carefully guide you through the changes of the revised curriculum and what the changes might mean to you and your students practically. Without any further delay, I will now hand you over to our subject expert and author who will inform us on the syllabus changes and expectations. Thank you, Oxford University Press, for this opportunity to present information about the new and revised computerized financial systems N5 textbook. This textbook is based on the new syllabus that will be launched in 2022. My name is Lisa Haman. I'm one of the authors of this textbook. My co-author is Charlene October, and I will be handing over to her now, and she will share some information about the changes in the new and revised syllabus and how we applied it in the textbook. Thank you, Lisa, for that introduction. And I will be um, explaining to you the reason for the revised syllabus. Um, the reason was to keep abreast with business development and digital age. The revision was to reflect changes in the financial environment, example, the VAT, the pay as you earn, and the labor market skills demands. The content seeks to clarify the sequence 
in which the subject content is taught to the students aligned to what they would do in the industry or with self-study. Now we would look at the specific aims as per DHET. The aim was to enable students to make use of any computerized accounting program and spreadsheet. The reason was so that they could do analysis and interpretation of financial statements, as well as to use the computerized financial system to write financial reports. Now, writing financial reports on a computerized system, um, the system PASTEL has its own default um, computerized financial, um, financial statements that you can write, but the reason was now that you can currently write your own customized financial statements. And if we talk about financial statements, you can write your own customized balance sheet, which is now also known as um, statement of financial pos position, as well as also the comprehensive income statement that you can do according to your company's needs. This also will enable students to create a new company from scratch and do report writer and budgets using the PASTEL program. The reason was also to intensify the students' understanding of a computerized accounting system by doing full computerized set of accounts. So here you will create the accounts from scratch as in, in four, you you received a set of accounts that was created by your lecturer. But now in N5, you will have to create the set of accounts from scratch. It was also um, to help students and to enable students to acquire the basic competency in the application of a spreadsheet function in accordance with the spreadsheet program. This also will enable the student to create basic accounting systems for small or medium businesses on a spreadsheet package. So the system will also allow you to export from PASTEL to Excel and then to adjust and use your Excel knowledge to adjust the PASTEL financial statements that you exported. Um, this will also help students to gain knowledge and skills of cost management and applications on spreadsheet packages. So in a nutshell, the, stu the student will learn to use a financial computerized system as well as Excel spreadsheets and also to export from computerized financial system to an Excel spreadsheet. The duration that is allocated for full-time and part-time students would be full-time. You'll have a minimum of six hours per week so if you have hour periods, you will have six periods per week and majority of the times, majority um, colleges will use double periods. So it will be three sessions per week with double periods that you use. And then part-time, the allocation and duration for part-time would be a minimum of three hours per week for one semester. Then if we have a quick overview of what changed, um, module one was basic Excel, how to use a spreadsheet. And basically there was no changes, minor changes made in the revised syllabus. Then module two, we focused on stock methods. And if we look at the stock methods, we looked at the different type of stock methods. Example, um, LIFO, FIFO, and LIFO was actually left out of the revised syllabus, but in our textbook, you'll see that we still mention LIFO, and that was only for one reason, is to compare so that the student can see the difference between the FIFO and the LIFO method. So that was the only reason why we um, included LIFO, although it's not for examination purposes. Module three is financial statements, which was also in the past financial statements. But here we will um, use the new 
um, terminologies like statement of comprehensive income and statement of financial position. So it was still the same as in the old syllabus, but the only thing that was added was the statement of cash flow. So module three is now a longer module because it was a module seven that was in the old syllabus was included now by module three. So in module three, we look at all financial statements and the main three main financial statements would be the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position, which is also known in, in the past as the balance sheet and then also the statement of cash flow. Um, the cash flow was the one that was added to module three. Then module four is the manufacturing cost statement, which was also known as the production cost statement. If you look at the uh, module five, module five is totally something new that was, I want to say, imported from the old CFS in six curriculum. Um, was the analysis and interpretation of financial statements. Now in module three, we are doing financial statements and in module five, um, the students will be taught how to analyze and to read those statements that we dealt with in module three. But module five is totally something new in the new curriculum and it was inherited from the CFS in six old curriculum. Module six and module seven is now pastel, which used to be in the past payroll. And now payroll was totally replaced by pastel. And pastel was also one of CFS in sixes curriculums, topics that was brought or carried over to CFS in five now. Now in module six, we will do report writer. Now a report writer is where the student will create a set of books from scratch and the student will have to customize, write a customized report according to the needs of their specific company. So this is totally something new for the student and um, they, will, they will be taught here how to write that report. And the aim here is basically on accuracy. Accuracy is very important here when writing a report. Then module seven is also pastel, but it will be budgets. And here we will look at the three different types of um, ways of doing a budget. The first one that PASL um, offers us is to copy a, bu a budget. So we will copy a budget, either a budget from last year to the next year or from next year, um, current year to next year or all the different options that they will, they will offer you in the, in the computerized financial program. And then we'll also look at um, creating a budget from scratch where you start a budget from new and you enter the balances. And the next one would also be having an existing budget and you need to adjust the budget. So module five, six and seven, one can say is modules that came from the CFS in six curriculum. And that was now brought to the CFS in five curriculum. And this is, basically the overview of the new curriculum, the CF is in five new curriculum. And if you can have a quick um, summary of it, everything stayed the same except module three is where we added the cash flow. And then module five is the in analysis and interpretation of financial statements. And module six would be PASL, the report writer, and module seven would be new also, budgets also on pastel. And that would be the new, a quick overview of what changed in the new curriculum. Now my colleague, Lisa Haman, will be introducing or explaining the different weights of the different modules. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlene, for highlighting those differences for us between the old and the new syllabus. 
Charlene is a very experienced lecturer. She's been teaching this subject for many years and she was also the examiner. So she really has a lot of valuable knowledge that she can share with us. I'm going to focus now on the module weightings, um, and then I'm going to look at the student book modules, a quick overview of that, and the lecturer guideline as well. So the module weightings, the first module, module one, is quite light. So mastering a spreadsheet, it's only 5%. Um, the financial accounting and applications on the spreadsheet is 10%. Financial statement applications and basic cost and management accounting packages, as well as analysis and interpretation of financial statements, are all 15% of the module. So, this module five is one of the new modules that was added. And then, module six and module seven, which is focused on the pastel accounting packages financial reports and budgets using an accounting packages, um, that is worth 20% each. Um, so this gives you an idea of what should get the most focus in this new syllabus. Moving on from this, we look at the student book modules. Module one is mastering a spreadsheet. So that is very similar to the previous Module one, where we look, look at the different formula, how you apply it, the formula, uh, the format, formatting of um, different fonts, that type of thing. Moving on to module two, we look at the financial accounting applications on a spreadsheet. So stock methods, the FIFO method, the average price method, and we apply them on a spreadsheet. So here, the students get to apply everything they learned in module one. They have to merge cells, they have to bold cells, they have to um, uh, change font to italics, etc. while using the stock methods. Module three, the financial statements on a, on a spreadsheet. Now this module, some of the terminology has changed. So uh, a statement of comprehensive income, for example, that's an income statement, what we used to refer to as an income statement, a statement of financial position, uh, a balance sheet, a statement of cash flow is a cash flow statement. That one is quite obvious. And the statement of cash flow is, of course, a new addition in this new and revised syllabus. Then the next one, module four, basic cost and management accounting on a spreadsheet, that's your manufacturing cost statements. Using an Excel sheet, we look at the different types of manufacturing cost statements. Module five, analysis and interpretation. Module six, financial reports using a pastel accounting program. There um, you will use, you will start uh, a new company. So you will be guided, the lecturer and the student will be guided in the textbook to create a new company and to create financial reports. And then continuing on that, um, budgets will be created. So the idea of the textbook was to make it as user-friendly as possible. The idea is that a student should be able to take this textbook and work independently. So we've included a lot of, a lot of explanations step-by-step -step guides how to do um, the different steps, processes. Um, moving on from that, we have the lecturer guide, um, which is there to support the lecturer. So in the lecturer guide, we've included the general aims, the weightings of the assessments, again, just for you, for your ease of use, if we can put it that way. But again, the idea was to reduce your workload and to save time for the lecturer. So we've included a teaching plan template. The teaching plan template guides you. It shows you how much time you should spend on different modules. Um, and of course, this is not set in stone. So you can adjust that. You can change that to, um, to your own needs. Um, Sometimes with all the public holidays, et cetera, sometimes you need to make some 
adjustments. There's also some great teaching suggestions and tips. As I've mentioned before, there's a lot of experience here that comes with the book. Um, so those tips and suggestions are based on our experience over the years and what we picked up, what worked for us. And then to assist you with exam preparation, there's a mock exam. And of course, there are marking guidelines there for all the power breaks and the assessment questions. Once again, to make your life easier and to make it easy for you to use the book. So this is just an example of a lecture support lesson teaching plans. Here we suggest that module one, um, you should spend about one week on, on module one using computer demonstrations, show the students um, how to do um, the different applications in Excel, for example, how to bold italics, et cetera. Um, but don't spend too much time on module one. Remember, that's only 5% of the syllabus waiting. Then we've got module two, uh, we suggested another week for that, um, and the units that should be covered in that time. And then module three, we've suggested two weeks. But once again, these are guidelines and you should adjust them to suit your own needs. It is what works for you. Assessment and weightings, we've got an AM or the practical project that's worth 20% of the mark. That's very similar to the old syllabus, what it used to be like. And there you have to cover 20% um, um, of the syllabus. Then there's the test, which should cover 40 to 50% of the syllabus. And that's worth 30% of your ICAS mark. And then, of course, there's the internal exam, which will be 50% of the ICAS mark. So it's suggested by that time that you've covered at least 70 to 80% of the syllabus. And the duration of that internal exam should, of course, be aligned with the national exam. So uh, if three hours or uh, 200 marks, then you should reduce your internal exam to about 120 to 140 marks for, for a two hour exam. We've included a mock exam for you in the um, lecturer guide. So there you'll see we have the different questions. There's a little example of what the question will look like, the start of the question. Um, We've allocated marks to the different questions and of course the suggested time. So with this type of practical subject, it's very important that the students get to practice as often as possible. And we don't have um, any old question papers to rely on yet because, well, we haven't written a national exam yet based on the new syllabus. So we believe that the mock exam will be really useful to you um, in terms of what to expect when it comes to the exam at the end of the, um, the semester. So that brings us to the conclusion of this presentation. Uh, before we conclude, I would like to remind you that there's the learning zone on the Oxford University Press website. You can log into the learning zone and there will be PowerPoint slides for each module and you can download those slides and you can adjust them. If you wanna change them to suit your own needs, you're welcome to do that. But that is just uh, another way that we would like to support you. And we would like to make your lives a little bit easier and save you a little bit of time. And then I would like to thank you for um, listening to this presentation, for taking the time to discover with us the changes in the new syllabus and to consider our textbook. Thank you. Thank you and good day colleagues. Um, thank you to our subject matter expert and authors for explaining and taking us through the revised syllabus, the changes, what exciting new features in the syllabus we can be expecting when it is implemented and then just guiding us on what we can expect come the implementation of the new syllabus. My part here 
will be to share with you the advantages, features, and benefits of the Oxford University Press Succeed in series for computerized financial systems in five. So just to give you a bit of inside information, we use a quality assurance model known as the LARP model. And this acronym simply stands for, we are conscious of the language we use. We are conscious of the amount and types of activities that we provide in our textbooks to give you the lecturer and the students ample opportunity to increase competence. We also are, are very vigilant on the assessments that we provide per module to, to, to give students up towards recognition of internal or ICAS assessments, as well as the national examinations, which is the next one, progression. Because at the end of the day, we want all our students to pass and have a good retention and pass rate for all of our levels and subjects. So we focus quite well on the national examination preparation. And then the last P in our quality assurance model is reserved for you, the lecturer, planning. We know time is of valuable resource to you. Myself being a former lecturer within the college environment knows how much time is given to you as a semester, which you think is six months, but you in reality only have three and a half to four months to complete everything. So we pitch in to help on this level of quality assurance, which you, I will get to a bit late in the presentation. So at OUP, we adhere strictly to DHET's prescription syllabus and requirements. We don't move away from that. To ensure that when we deliver material, it speaks to firstly the TVET market, and then to you, the lecturer, and your students in the overall success of the subject. Our textbooks materials, as well as our digital platform, very exciting um, platform, are carefully developed alongside expert authors and subject matter experts and aligned to our quality assurance model, the LARP model. So let's get into a few features, benefits, and advantages of our book. But firstly, what can you expect when you place an order through Oxford University Press? It will be the uh, student book, as well as a lecturer guide, both a four size and well equipped with information and a recipe that really speaks to the TVET market and the subject. So a key feature. So I'm going to be going through a few key features, but also just show you what they look like. So we have module openers. So at the beginning of each module, we have the module's name as per syllabus. We have the units, but laid out in a nice flow diagram or flow chart so that students can see within chunks where they need to start, where they need to end within the module. Then we have the learning outcomes taken word for word from the Department of Higher Education and Training syllabus, not a word out of place. And then below that, we have key terms. Now, these key terms were selected by the subject matter experts and authors as terms and words that students would need to engage with and understand in order to, to fully develop within a specific module. But further to that, also be able to recognize within examinations so that they know that they don't use words that are familiar to them, but words that are more frequently used and familiar to the Department of Education, as well as your internal examination processes. And these key terms then feature throughout the module where we extract them and provide the actual definition thereof, improving the reinforcement or the positive reinforcement of seeing and absorbing. Okay, so that's our module openers. Then we have starting points. Now, this is very exciting. The starting points are linked either to a real case study or an adapted case study through the author's eyes or subject matter expert's eyes, which cleverly incorporates the learning outcomes because students will not read those bullet point learning outcomes. So we've taken that and cleverly used the power of a narrative or a story, which helps students relate and understand that there are others out there in the real world that are experiencing what they are about to experience in this module. There are others in the real world that learn what they are about to learn in this module. So it's a nice way for them to be introduced to the module and not be so apprehensive towards just seeing learning outcomes and content given in a test. We use the power of stories. And it's case study driven. And this is a key feature from the Department of Higher Education and Training where case studies are required to provide students with this real world um, experience as close as possible, where work integrated learning is maybe not possible or that all students can't go to the same type of working environment. So we've identified certain stories that can help them 
see themselves in others and the real world. So that's a mm -hmm. strong key feature at the beginning of our books. Then we have power breaks and activities. Now there are many power breaks and activities where possible, where the authors felt that after a certain portion of work, students are ready now to be tested, but in an informal manner. So these are either individual tasks or group tasks that just kind of reinforces the work that has been learned just before getting to this activity point. So there's multiple, but you as a lecturer know your timetable, know your students, and you can decide whether to do these in class, face-to-face, -face, contact time, blended learning, your online medium platforms, or just assign it as homework and then share with them the answers, which we have provided in the lecture guide, which I'll get to now in a moment. Here's an example of um, a power break activity in module three. Power break 3.1 just indicates the module and the power break number. So this is from module number three. Then to reinforce those key terms, we have definition boxes. So as soon as these words appear on the page, we highlight it in bold. And at the bottom of the page is reinforced with a definition box with multiple definitions, a single definition. Then at certain points also, just for students to be aware and grab the attention, we have note boxes or did you know boxes that provides either interesting facts around a certain topic that is busy being discussed or an element of, for, the, for look at this example, it's Excel. So here we're telling them on a normal calculator, your multiply is a X and your divide is a line with two dots. But in Excel, the multiply is your asterisk and your divide is a forward slash. So these are key things that students would then need to also know. Because at the end of the day, if it maybe slipped your mind as a lecturer, the textbook is there to help you as the lecturer not keep everything on your mind to share with students, but act as a resource that students can also refer to and also provide a bit of self-help and self-evaluation. Then at the end of each module, now remember, I'm not talking about the book's features, I'm talking about per module that makes up the quality of book. At the end of each module, we have a summary where we just have a few sentences in a paragraph that summarizes what the student has actually learned within this module and where they will be going to next in the following module. So kind of like a linking sentence to what was and what will be. Then we have a checklist. And this breaks down all the learning outcomes exactly as per DHET, which we found at the module opener. But now it's in a checklist table form where students can indicate, yes, I know, no, I do not know yet. So here's a clever uh, bit of advice. You can use this as a lecturer, as a quality assurance tool for students to show them the power of checklists. So at the end of the module, have students reflect on what they've just done and go through the checklist, ticking off what they know and what they don't know. Then as a lecturer, just walk around and have a look at the checklist of the students while the books are open, or if they send you a picture via WhatsApp. Now you just focus on the ones that are no, firstly. So why did you indicate no? Were you absent? Don't you know the work? Do you need to revise it? Go visit page number, blah, 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 to go and get the solid information, and then you can make it a yes. But then also test the students to see if they know what the checklist is actually aiming to do. Now you look at the yes column. So if a student ticked yes, test them. Okay, so you ticked yes, you know how to open Excel, show me. You know how to do this, you said yes, show me. So students can also then see the responsibility they have to this checklist. And that's how you can assure quality in your classroom through the power of this checklist. After the checklist, there is a end of module assessment. And this is set up in what students can expect in an ICAS exam or a national examination. So it's laid out according to Bloom's taxonomy, starting with short responses, medium, then long-term responses, and working through their competence that are built up throughout the module. It also provides the mark allocation so that students can see that the level of response will return a level of mark. So that they are aware that when it comes to an internal exam or external exam, how they should be answering something when it says define or explain as opposed to just list through and false or match column A with column B. And all the, 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 the marking guidelines, rubrics and answers are in the lecture guide. So you don't need to work them out at all. All right, then we have the national examination um, exemplar. 
which helps students prepare for the national examination. And here again, instead of um, scratching for past examinations papers, which is always good, but because it's a revised syllabus, we don't have that past paper yet. So the subject matter experts, along with consultations with DHET, tries and pinpoints exactly what an end of year paper would look like, but there is no guarantee, but this is the closest thing to what you can expect. So we've broken it down in terms of suggested times that students should spend per question, mark allocations, and we've given the full mark allocation as per a national examination, the time as well of 180 minutes, and broken it up into various questions. The answers of which, again, are in the lecture guide. Talking about that support um, material. So the lecture guide is basically a tool that is there to reduce your workload as a lecturer. As mentioned, semester may seem like six months, but we know in actual, it is three and a half to four months. So in this, you have very limited time. Then you have um, rotational timetables, um, things like that, that also come into play for your classroom management, time management. And we pitched in to try and assist on this level. So there are lesson plan templates, there are teaching suggestions from the authors and subject matter experts trying to save you as much time as possible. We assist with the um, classroom activity preparations and the national examination preparations, and then provide all the rubrics, marking guidelines, and answers for you with ticks and mark allocations, as you will see now. But before I get there, here's an example of what the lesson plan template looks like. So we indicate to you the learning outcomes, the, um, the units that you will be doing, the assessments that are found within the book at a certain point of a unit. And then the last two columns are empty. But that's only because each college or classroom has their own management um, plan, uh, their semester plan, their pay setter. And you as a lecturer will know through disturbances or continuity of lessons if your classroom runs smoothly. So we as Oxford cannot put in dates for you. We cannot prescribe those dates for you. You as a lecturer will know when is the start date, the end date, and then you can sign it off. Now this can either be photocopied directly into your POA, or you can populate this into your templates provided by your colleges, and then put it into your portfolio of assessment. And similarly with the semester plan, which you will see here as well as an insert, we've mapped out the weeks for the full semester. And again, not added dates, because now you can use it for semester one or two. The weeks stay the same, but the dates will change. And that's according to your college. The topics will stay the same, the teaching methods, the teaching resources, plus in which module you will find this work in the student book. So these are all extracts and added resources that can help you as a lecturer save time and reduce your workload. Here's examples of the answers for the power break activity. So we're going to full depth and detail, not only providing like the answers for Excel, for example, but also the formulas that go with it. So your students plus yourselves as lecturers can have the full table of ingredients and you can pick and choose how to use it. Here's an example of how the national exam exemplar um, printouts will be marked. You will see the mark allocation or tick that will indicate where you should be looking to allocate the marks for this particular you know, task. Then very excitingly, the digital platform that you gain access to by prescribing and using the Oxford University Press resources. So I have two here and I'll explain to you now why. But before I get to what's learning zone, what's edu zone, regardless of that, what you do get on the platform is free access to digital material. And the main digital material is your front of class PowerPoint presentations set up per module. Now it's not set up as a slideshow or a SharePoint where you can't change the work. It is set up in a manner where you can download, open it up, add, delete, and do as you please, but the foundation is provided there for you. So you can use it as is, front of classroom, saving you time to develop a basic PowerPoint presentation per module. There are basic self-marking assessments for true and false questions, um, match column A with column B. So those smaller type of basic questions where students can do it till the end, get the mark, get the result, do it over again until they can build up a competence that improves their mark at the end and it's self-marking so you can just basically have your students log into the system um, on 
the platform our platform and then have them do it during the time that you allocate to them or do it at home now learning zone edu zone so we are moving away from learning zone which was our digital platforms name we are moving now to edu zone so we are saying goodbye to learning zone sadly but you will still be afforded the same free resources but just the platform has changed so within this year learning zone will be phased out and come next year edu zone will be in full function so make sure to keep track of our social media platforms and communications if you have not been receiving our communications get hold of our sales consultants that will be able to guide you in terms of time frame in which we will be switching over but also the communication on the exciting tour of the platform how to use it and those features benefits and advantages of eduzone so keep keep um keep up to date um go to our social media pages facebook um, youtube um linkedin like them um, add them to your network so that you can stay informed and updated on any of these changes then just to give a quick summary and rundown of everything that i presented to you this uh during the session we we align ourselves with DHET fully we use experience authors to write our content and subject matter experts that review and advise we align our student book and lecture guide together provide lesson plans for you and templates that help save you time then we have additional resources in some subjects not all so for example the subject would not have a workbook so that refers to other subjects but within the student book we have the middle section in terms of the features benefits and advantages of module openers uh, starting points for real world case study um, narratives we have activities power breaks which are um, there are plenty of them which you can use in the class or assign as homework then we reinforce key terms through definition boxes did you know boxes um, and then at the end of the module we have checklists formative assessments and then at the end of the book we have a national exam exemplar then we have a digital platform that assists you with digital resources such as powerpoint presentations front of class usage um, which is still currently learning zone but moving over to edu zone and then additional resources and support to you the lecturer such as this um, virtual presentations webinars workshops so if you feel that a workshop would um, benefit you and your students um, get in touch with one of ourselves consultants and then we can see how to set something up to assist you so that concludes me for this presentation let me just move this video segment out of the way so that you can see our n6 book is busy loading and we are excited to have um, that soon hit the market and present that to you as well but for now get in contact with one of our sales consultants so that you can succeed in tv as well as computerized financial systems n5 have a good day and all the best to you and your lecturers and your students for this subject. Goodbye.